the growing carnage in Egypt and what, if anything, America can do to stop it. The second part of that, what to do, is very unclear to say the least. The cost in human lives, though, is plain to see. The breaking news tonight on two fronts. First, moments ago, the Muslim Brotherhood spokesman announcing over Twitter that tomorrow will be a, quote, Friday of anger, a day of anger, calling for marches to head toward Cairo center after noon prayers. Also tonight, the death toll from yesterday's clashes revised upwards significantly. The state-run TV station in Egypt, Nile TV, now saying at least 580 people were killed in fighting yesterday and 4,000 wounded. 580 killed, 4,000 people wounded. Eyewitnesses say the killing mostly at the hands of government forces, many of them when troops and security forces firing live ammunition demolished a pair of protest camps in Cairo. Reaction to all the killing today felt across Egypt. This is Alexandria, where thousands of Morsi supporters hit the streets, defying the state of emergency now in effect. In Giza, not far from the pyramids, the local government headquarters came under attack from Islamist forces who threw Molotov cocktails and blocked the near, nearby main road into Cairo. Not far from there, members of the Coptic Christian faith surveyed the wreckage of their church. Last night, a mob chanting for Egypt to become an Islam, Islamic state torched and looted the house of worship. One of at least two churches burned last night. A third was set ablaze today. Again, nearly 600 people killed, 4,000 wounded. Today, the Pentagon canceled upcoming joint military exercises with Egypt, and President Obama condemned the military government's recent actions. He did not, however, condemn the regime itself. We don't take sides with any particular party or political figure. I know it's tempting inside of Egypt to blame the United States or the West or some other outside actor for what's gone wrong. We've been blamed by supporters of Morsi. We've been blamed by the other side as if we are supporters of Morsi. That kind of approach will do nothing to help Egyptians achieve the future that they deserve. Well, ever since the Camp David Peace Treaty in 1978, that future has been tightly coupled to the United States, especially the U.S. military, with Egypt receiving about a billion and a half dollars a year in American aid. That's second only to what Israel gets. President Obama has neither explicitly cut off the money nor referred to the military takeover as a coup, which would shut off the dollars automatically.